Saul Marquez with the Outcomes Rocket, and today I'm here at the MedTech Innovator with the outstanding James Lancaster. He's the president of Solenic Medical. And so, James, I want to start off just by having you tell us a little bit about yourself and the company, Solenic Medical. What are you guys solving for? How are you different? Um, yeah, James Lancaster with Selenic Medical. I'm a serial entrepreneur for the past 20 years, um, mostly working in the medical and high-tech industry in general. Uh, Selenic Medical is treating infections on implants, prosthetic joint implants or trauma implants like artificial knees, hips, and the stuff. Anything metal that's an implant in the body. Um, and what we're doing is killing bacteria on the surface in a non-invasive way. We're not opening up the body to touch the uh, equipment, uh, to touch the implant itself. We're physically doing it with magnetic fields from the outside. Uh, in fact, the good way to think about it, um, they may have uh, told you not to go in an MRI with metal in your body. We're basically taking kind of the same approach, but we're using an MRI-like magnetic device to have the implant kill bacteria on the surface. So we're doing what you, what they tell you not to do. Interesting. So, so the technology is using MR type of alternating magnetic fields, purely alternating magnetic fields, and and doing it in such a way that it, it affects the geometry of the uh, device and causes it to heat up and disrupt bacteria. And if it not right out, outright kill it, it is um, complementary to the standard of care, which is the use of antibiotics. It doesn't disrupt the use of antibiotics. It actually complements it greatly. Fascinating. So you've figured out an approach to use what you're not supposed to do exactly. in, a, in a maybe a lighter way. Exactly. Uh, and, and so maybe one of the questions that folks are wondering is how about necrosis? You know, is this, is this a potential uh, issue? Um, in a very, very, very light way. I mean, the one way to think about it, if there's a patient that has a prosthetic joint infection um, and it's chronic and they're having trouble treating it with multiple waves of antibiotics, the next step is to open up the wound and to do a washout, which is another surgery. The next step after that is a two-step revision where they take out the implant, they debride the flesh, put in a spacer, and a couple weeks later they put in a new plant, implant. That's very disruptive. The next step after that is amputation of the limb. So realistically, once they've done so, several series of antibiotics, the next step is very invasive, and we're going to do far less damage to the uh, body tissue around the implant than in any of the next steps. So is there a risk of damage? Yes, but I guarantee you it's several stages below any one of those steps, much less amputation. Fair call out, uh, James. And so as you look to tackle this, this space, you know, bundled payments are a very real thing. Uh, how are you guys uh, approaching that with limited dollars assigned to, to each surgery nowadays? Uh, can you speak to, to, to that a little bit? Yeah, now, the, because of the fact that we're actually limiting future surgeries or second rounds of surgeries or a second round of implant, much less um, loss of mobility from a... Um, from an amputation, um, it, it's it's preventing more procedures. The other thing that makes it really um, the incentive for facilities, infection rates are a huge factor there, reducing infection rates, and the doctor's reputation is based on um, their infection rates. So um, the fact that we can reduce infections, much less stop a recurring chronic infection, that they're coming back time after time, um, there's a huge value add because you're, you're, instead of one procedure turning into two or three more surgeries, much less a lingering infection that can really can become a runaway and a loss of limb, uh, there's tremendous benefit and upside that uh, even if there is a, a, a payment, additional payment involved, it's well worth it. But the cost of the procedure is a fraction of what uh, the surgical procedure was. So if they wanted to bundle it in but reduce the risk of uh, further infections, it's really pretty cost effective to do that. That's great. Yeah, and you addressed that, the, the following question about cost, so I appreciate you doing that. It's something that's on all of our minds as we look to bring down the, the cost of care. Uh, it it's, it's, seems like it's a, uh, a, a lower risk, uh, more conservative approach anyway. So instead of having to open up, you could do it minimally invasively. Yeah. Well, one key aspect about that, if you think about who's having the implants, um, if you have a sports injury, 
maybe you break your leg skiing or um, or something like that you fall off an SUV you're young and you're probably young and healthy and you can handle um, infections the average patient that gets a prosthetic joint like artificial hip or a knee in general they're an older patient they may have other comorbidities like um, diabetes they may have a otherwise compromi compromised immune system they may be on blood thinners their ability to handle another surgical procedure, much less two or three, is very, very low. So the, the two extremities of our market is the young, healthy uh, trauma patient or the older patient that really, really does not need more surgical care for that procedure. Yeah, that's a good call out, James. And as you and your team tackle this challenge, uh, where is it being done? Like, where's where is this procedure? Is it a procedure? You know, is it is it ambulatory? Is it done in a hospital at home? Tell me more about that. It typically would be done in an outpatient setting, like the orthopedic surgeon obviously used a surgical center. They may do the follow-up visits in their um, in their clinic. Um, it's a very light. It's it's about the equivalent of doing a ultrasound procedure. It's very it's a very low end. I mean, you're you're not contacting the blood. You're not uh, opening the body up. Um, you're really kind of working on the outside, like an ultrasound or a bone growth stimulator technology. Fantastic. That's a great analogy, sort of a good way for us to better understand how invasive is it, where can we do it. Um, what inspires your work in, in, in this business? Um, I love working around healthcare technologies. I've been a high-tech entrepreneur and um, in the innovation space for 30-something for years. Healthcare inspires me and helping people inspire me because um, I really kind of want to tell my kids I'm doing something that's, that's cool and dad is kind of hip, but he's also doing good. I mean, to me, it's a uh, what what you tell your kids when you're growing when they're growing up kind of thing that you want to feel good about it. And um, doing anything in the health healthcare space is a, really a feeling good story that you can tell your kids and inspire them to have a similar kind of mindset. Yeah, that's awesome, James. I'm sure your kids are proud of you and uh, and everybody back home. And so, I guess at this point, uh, you know, for for the viewers as well as the uh, the listeners. What would your call to action be for them, and uh, what's the best place that they could find you and, and, and you know, learn more about what you guys offer? Yeah. Um, one call to action is we're, we're in the process of uh, trying to research what's the full breadth of problems we can solve. We had a, um, a, a parent call a couple of weeks ago. His son, 14 years old, had an a injury falling off an SUV, chronic infection since then. Um, and they're reaching the point where if they don't solve it pretty soon, they're going to risk amputation of the limb. So that, that the parent of the 14-year-old, I'd like to understand... It would be terrible to think that there's a whole lot of those parents that are going through that with their children, but if, that's, if that is a, a large enough um, case study that we need to go after early, then, then that certainly kind of tugs on the heartstrings. Um, we know the elder population and the growing rate of prosthetic joint surgeries and stuff like that. So we're looking for the cases that need solving most and where should we put our time and energy to. Um, after that, it's, um, it's looking for the investors, looking for the, uh, the team members and stuff. We are a early stage company. We have a very talented but small team we'll be adding to it. But we're looking for people that want to solve those kind of problems that those people are calling bad. Um, in terms of anyone interested in any of those things, would uh, uh, whether investor, whether a patient perspective or a team perspective, uh, feel free to check out our website, www.selenic.com, -E or email james.lancaster at selenic.com. Awesome, James. Hey, really appreciate the work you're doing and, uh, and you sharing uh, the, really the, the, the vision and how you're doing it. I wish you luck today. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.